Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks, and today we're going to set up the Unihertz TikTok S smartphone, which TikTok and Unihertz have very kindly sent us to review. Now, as with most smartphones, the first thing I'll do is, before I even switch it on, is identify where the SIM tray slot is. In this case, it's on the left-hand side of the device when you're facing the screen. I'm going to take the SIM ejector tool, pop that in the little hole, and once that tray comes out, we can see that it takes two nano SIMs. So there's space for two SIM cards here. This is a dual SIM device. It also supports uh, 5G. So what I'm going to do is put my Smarty SIM card, which is a UK 5G SIM card, into one of the SIM slots, the one furthest away, and then slot that into the smartphone. So there we go. Almost there. And that fits in nice and flush. Now, you just probably saw that. There's a little bit of a gasket on the inside there. Because this is a rugged, uh, splash-proof smartphone, uh, that's why it was a little bit tougher than normal. So I'm going to long press the side button. This is the power button on the side of the device. And we're greeted by the Unihertz logo, powered by Android. Now this is a, a nice new screen from Unihertz, which upgrades on the TikTok Ease display by having a cutout dotch at the top left of the screen. And now we're greeted, greeted by our Android setup screen. So I'm going to set this up, but I'm going to go for English and specifically going to go for United Kingdom. Great. So that's that done. Next, let's start the setup. So I'm going to set connect to my Wi-Fi network. Okay then, so that should be me connected now. And first impressions of the typing experience are quite pleasant. The haptic feedback is there, but it's very, very soft. It's in a way a little bit mushy, and that's not surprising. Uh, probably due to the price range of this device, uh, they haven't put a super powerful motor in, but also the cons rugged construction of the device means that any haptic feedback will be dampened by the rugged construction of the smartphone. Anyway, as I've entered my Wi-Fi uh, password and it's connected to the internet, we're now uh, going through the whole setup process. It's just checking everything. And when I get offered the option to copy apps and data, I'm going to say, don't copy. I want to set this up as a new smartphone and use it as such. So it will take a moment. It will need to check the relevant information here. And uh, once that's done, we'll go through the, the canonical setup. And that involves entering my Google credentials. So I'll just be a moment. Now I'm going through uh, two-factor authentication, so I will need to go and get another smartphone. Okay then, and now that I've authenticated myself with two-factor authentication, turn that on guys. If you don't use two-factor authentication, I strongly recommend you do so. So who's going to be using this device? I will. Uh, interesting that this gives us the option to set up the device for a family member, a child. Um, Good to see Google starting to offer that. Now, Google Terms of Service, I trust in Google and their partners. So thank you very much, Google, for Android and the Android ecosystem. Now, whilst the device sets up, there'll be a few authentication and confer confirmations of permissions here. And I'm fine with all the defaults that Google sets. Now, next up, we need to set a pin number for the device. Okay then, so that is the pin number set up. Next up, we need to set up the smartphone to unlock with face recognition. So this is really quite interesting, a device in this price range that does offer face unlock. Now, this is uh, really just a warning that you need to set this up and the face unlock data will be securely stored on the device so it doesn't get shared out with the device. So I agree with all these terms and conditions. Now let's set up face unlock. I'm going to try and do so whilst uh, recording this video. So I'm going to move my microphone cable, press start. 
there we go, that was relatively fast. Done. Next up, let's set up a fingerprint. So, pin number, face unlock, and now fingerprint recognition. So, in this case, the power button, the one we long press to switch on the smartphone, is also a fingerprint scanner. And so that involves pressing on that, oops, pressing on that fingerprint scanner to set it up. Now, just a moment, I accidentally actually pressed the button. So I need to make sure that whilst pressing the button, I'm not actually clicking it because that will switch off the screen. And the idea is that you gently press your button, your finger multiple times. So the fingerprint scanner recognizes your thumbprint or fingerprint. In this case, it's thumbprint. And once a sufficiently good image of your thumbprint is captured, you'll be able to unlock the smartphone with that. So it's about 20 scans at the moment. Just a few more. And there we go. So that's my thumbprint added. Great. So we've turned on all the unlocking features, all the security features. Now we've got the Google Assistant. I'm comfortable with this. I have set it up on multiple fo phones, so there probably isn't the need of additional voice match. I also use the Google Assistant whilst driving in Android Auto, but this is all set up. Great, so we've set up our smartphone. I don't really want to go through any other setups. We're ready to go. So let's move into the device. Now, obviously I've been going on, on through this setup for a few minutes now, and first impressions of the device is ergonomically, despite being a rugged, chunky device, it is actually very usable for typing. The screen is lovely. Color saturation is, I would say, one of the best I've ever seen on an LCD panel. And just in general, it's a, it's a nice smartphone. So as you can see, my Google feed is on the left. On the right, I have standard home screen, and then you have the app drawer. It's standard fare from Unihertz. We've seen this on other smartphones, such as the TikTok E from Unihertz, the Jelly 2E, the Titan Slim, and now on the TikTok S smartphone. So let's go into the Google Play Store, see if there are any updates. I'm not really interested in uh, subscribing to a games, gaming service. So as it comes out of the box, there's 26 updates available. They all seem to be Google-related apps, the pre-installed ones that any Open Handset Alliance device has. So I'm going to click Update All, and that will update all the apps and background services that enable the smartphone to be updated and secure. So among these apps, you'll see there's things such as carrier services, there's the Android system web view, as well as other apps. But first things first, Chrome has just updated. We have our first notification on the smartphone. And now all the other apps are downloading and installing. And as you can see, it's installing quite quickly. Apps that are between 30 and 100 megabytes download very quickly over my fast Wi-Fi, which indicates that likely the storage on the Unihouse TikTok S is a relatively quick one. If you'd like to see some if you'd like to see some uh, dedicated videos on tests such as benchmarks, which we consider pretty much pointless at this point or at Tech Travel Geeks, uh, we could do it, but bear in mind, benchmarks are not really an indicator of the overall smartphone experience. Now, whilst these apps are installing, let's have a look at the settings menu. So pull down the notifications, you can go into settings, scroll down to the bottom, and look at about phone, about phone. So Unihertz logo, first and for, forefront there, the phone number that's currently in the device. Let's check and see if there's a system update. So this is the, the screen, the sort of MediaTek setup for checking the setup, and we're already up to date. So this is 
last checked on the 24th of February, which is today. And as you can see, we do have gesture navigation turned on by default here. Let's try setting something else up. Um, and when I say setting something up is playing around with the settings here. Now, first things first, uh, display. Where is that? Display, here we go. Now, brightness level is set by in auto at 80%. I want to turn on dark screen, dark mode, dark theme. I quite enjoy that. And we do have a uh, wallpaper picker here. So you have the standard AOSP or Android open source project wallpaper picker, as well as Google Photos. Let's see what the default wallpapers are like on the Unihertz TikTok S. So we have this nice uh, coastal, coastal view, which is pretty spectacular, nicely saturated colors. There's this sort of marbly finish one, uh, which is also very nice. There's a really scary bridge, uh, which I don't think you'll have. Uh, this looks like a painting of Mount Fuji. Yeah, that's definitely a painting. And what else? Uh, some sort of waveform design. This is the universe design wallpaper that we saw on the TikTok E and that I'm still using on there. Ooh, a ball of fire. Is it a basketball of fire? Yes, it is. Rejoice NBA fans. Um, some sort of vase, uh, nondescript Mediterranean colorful village. So quite a few interesting wallpapers there. Uh, I'm going to stick with this one. I quite like this one and I'm going to set it for home and lock screen. So the wallpaper picker seems to work well. There's advanced settings for the display. You can set up your font size so you can make it smaller or bigger, but I'm going to leave it as the default for my review purposes. Uh, what else do we want to see? So we've looked at the display. Storage. Now the Unihertz TikTok S uh, does not have expandable storage. We saw that that SIM tray on the left is only for two nano SIMs. As the device uh, was sent to us, it has 128 gigabytes of storage built in. And as of the setup of the device, it does have 14 gigabytes used. So that means you have more than 100 gigabytes to install apps, games, services, and more importantly, download media for use whilst you're traveling. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up this smartphone because I'll be using it whilst traveling to Italy early next week. And I'll be using it whilst in Italy to do my long-term review. I'll be kickstarting that early because I really want to have a rugged smartphone to use and put it through its paces in multiple situations. Anyway, let's see where we are with the updates in the Google Play Store. As you can see, the Google Play Store has updated to the dark theme. That's down to the fact I changed the system settings and the app intelligently picks that up. So apparently there's one update pending, the Android system web view. It's a 50 megabyte update that's updating really, really quickly. Okay, so it can't install at the moment. It may require a system reboot. Uh, but before we do that, let's install the key app I want to look at here. Because the TikTok S smart from, U from Unihertz is a significant upgrade on the TikTok E we saw. It is running an octa-core uh, chipset from MediaTek. In this ca case, it's the Dimensity 700 chipset. So you have a pretty powerful chipset paired with in this case, eight gigabytes of RAM and the internal storage we talked about, 128 gigabytes built in. Uh, the important thing is that this particular MediaTek chipset has on its system on a chip, a 5G radio built in. So this is the same chipset we've seen before on other devices from companies like Xiaomi and others. And in my experience, it's pretty decent, but I won't pass judgment just yet, it's still a bit early. Uh, we'll need to set this device up. Whoop, got an ad here. See if the volume down works, it works fine. So for some reason I'm getting an Arabic TikTok ad 
on here. Anyway, the CPU-Z app obviously tells us that we have the December security patch, December 2022 security patch, which is perfectly fine in February 2023. It's Android 12 uh, with uh, some minor customizations from Unihertz. And we'll see how that system on a chip from MediaTek, the Dimensity 700, performs here. But first impressions with regards to updating apps and setting things up is very good. Now, let's go through setting up what I'll be using this device for, media. So, Netflix. So, apparently Netflix is not compatible with the Unihertz TikTok S. So, Netflix as distributed in the Google Play Store doesn't work. Let's see if Disney Plus works. That works fine, great. Amazon Prime Video, that works fine. I'm not a Spotify subscriber. I am an avid TikTok user, so I'll download that. Download Instagram. Uh, what else? Amazon, definitely need that. Messenger, yes, need that to speak to friends and family. Audible, yes, my preferred audiobook app. Let's see. So there's quite a few apps here, but let's focus on the ones from Facebook, which I've started using a lot more recently due to the irresponsible behavior from the new owner of Twitter. So I'll install Facebook. What else do we want to have a look at? Not really interested in any of these apps. Obviously, I communicate with most of my friends using Telegram. So we'll need that. And whilst we're at it, let's have a look at the other apps from Amazon. It's already installed. So I'll just search for Amazon and see what comes up. Amazon Music, great app. If you're a Prime subscriber, you get access to that. Amazon Photos, great way to back up your photos. If you're a Prime member, unlimited photo storage, something that Google doesn't offer with Google Photos anymore. And okay, let's move on to my podcast app of choice, which is Pocket Cast. Obviously there's Google Podcasts as well. That works best in the car for me with Android Auto. I'll install that. Great, so I think some apps are installing in the background. As you can see, they've come up. What I'm going to do next is something I often do is put my most used apps into a folder and then put them into the dock. So I'm going to put the Telegram app, Messenger app in there and then drag that down. And that way I have my messaging folder and I'll just call it messaging. Now, obviously this is using Google Messages as its default SMS app or default text message app. I will open that up and continue as me logged in, agree. And so what I want to check is that the chat features, so RCS is uh, being set up. Oop. I don't know this Smarty number at the moment, so I'll need to do that later. Um, we'll need to verify the number before we set that up properly. But first impressions of the device is that typing is a bit mushy with the haptic feedback, but uh, not unexpected due to the construction of this device. There is a nice little screen protector already installed on that full high definition plus display with a cutout for the Dodge, of course. Um, the overall feel of the device is very, very pleasant. It has a bit of heft to it. 
so in terms of setup i've got all the apps and services i want here uh, what i'll do is just pop chrome up don't really want that there but i will put all my social apps into one folder call that social drag that down so i have my phone messaging social media and camera app uh, all set up here and the rest i can set up later but audio i'll put in here and video here let's see if we can if we can drag and drop into there from there okay great all great Put amazon music in here and po podcasts in there as well great so i think in terms of setup we're pretty much done here I'm happy with how this phone is performing in the setup process. It hasn't had any slowdowns whilst having apps going on in the background, whilst being set up for the first time. So well done to Unihertz on that pleasant experience, which isn't something we always see when setting up a device for these videos. Quick check of that fingerprint scanner, works fine. So I'll be using this phone to travel to deepest, darkest Glasgow today. Next week, I'll be using it to travel to Italy. Uh, if you made it this far into this video, thank you for watching the setup of the Unihertz TikTok S with its lovely rear display. This is just the setup of the of the of the smartphone and the main applications I'll be using. We'll be doing some more videos uh, throughout the weeks when we're doing our long-term review uh, on this device. If there's anything you would like to know more about the Unihertz TikTok S smartphone feel free to leave a comment in the section below. We'll do our best to get back to you or maybe even include the, our response in a future video uh, for Tech Travel Geeks on here on YouTube. Now, if you don't already, please do subscribe to Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. We cover consumer electronics, gadgets, accessories, pretty much anything we think makes the travel experience better, including smartphones and gadgets, which especially when traveling via air, are very useful for things like boarding passes, Google Translate, and any other service which makes traveling easier. Anyway, I'll stop waffling on. Thanks for watching, and goodbye from me.